Welcome to Film in 5D, the show about everything film and the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammack. This week, I show you how to use the rotor brush tool in After Effects. Last week, we talked about rotoscoping and how useful of a skill it can be in post production, and we showed you how to use the pen tool to mask frame by frame which is actually my favorite method because of how accurate you can be. Wow, we're learning so much about you. Yeah. But today, I'm gonna to show you another tool in After Effects that accomplishes essentially the same thing, but it's actually much faster. It's called the Rotor Brush tool, and I believe it was first introduced in the CS4 version of After Effects. You can select it from your Tools tab or press Alt plus W. Make sure to double click the layer you wish to use the tool on. When you have the Rotor Brush tool selected, you will see two different brush styles. A green one, which selects which objects or patterns will be inside the mask, and a red one, which selects what will be on the outside of the mask. You can switch between these two types by pressing Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac. What about uh, Alt F4? I don't know, you, you press that, Colton. You do that. Okay. I'm not gonna tell them to do that. You do that. See what happens. That's right. Knowing and using these two brushes can be very helpful, especially if you're filming against a blue sky or a green screen. In fact, if I'm working on a project and I want my green screen footage to be perfect, I turn to the rotor brush tool. This is because a plugin like Keylight can tend to degrade your footage. What, does it like call it bad names or something? No, not that type of degrade. Like quality, like you start seeing through me. Oh, I see. So you use the rotor brush tool so it doesn't key out anything. Using the rotor brush tool, you can quickly isolate a part of your image, and unlike the pen tool, when you analyze forward, the mask conforms to your object or subject as it moves. Of course, it's not perfect, and you'll have to adjust frame by frame with the green and red brushes, but it still does a relatively good job at the end of the day, and it saves you a good amount of time. After your mask is finished, be sure to click the freeze button at the bottom right of the layer. Also, be sure to add a bit of feathering and smoothness to your liking. Next, some applications for the masking tool that you may find useful, but first, a public service announcement. Why'd you say Will can't make it? I already told you, dude. He said he had things to do. Like sabotage my show? He's not trying to sabotage the show. He's just trying to help us, but your ego keeps getting in the way. My ego? Are you kidding me? Have you seen this episode? Or this one, or even this one? Of course I have, and quite frankly, I just think he's afraid for his life. You gotta be kidding me. How could he possibly know I'm trying to kill him? You didn't tell him, did you? What did you expect me to do? You do know that he's my friend? But he's trying to steal all of our ideas. And you want to kill him? I mean, fine, whatever, man. I'm starving. Seriously though, man, he's, he's gotta stop ripping off our ideas. I don't talk to him about it. Like, I mean, I can help him make his own show if he asks me to, but I can't just stand by while he makes a carbon copy version of my show. Dude, I'll see what I can do. Wait. What? I don't know, something doesn't feel right. Close that door. Do what you have to do. Obviously, it's cool to use the masking tool to make multiple versions of yourself for your videos. But that's not the only thing you can use it for. Rotoscoping in general has many uses, but my favorite is the ability to separate your subject from the rest of the image, so that you can add effects to one separately from the other. Like blur for instance. You can also add an effects layer between the two layers, which can help give your special effects more realism. Hey! Let's do another product review. How about no? Please? Okay, I was just messing with you. Man, it's not your decision anyways. <laughs> Quiet. Today, I reviewed the LCD VF. Now, I touched on it a bit in our first episode right there, but I figured now that I've used it for several months, I'd do a review. The LCD VF is a detachable viewfinder that works with most DSLRs and attaches to your camera via a magnet. This is the best accessory I bought for my camera thus far. And even though eventually I'll build a rig with monitors and other fun stuff, I'll still use this for running and gunning, especially outdoors. The LCD VF does a few things. It magnifies the image on your screen by 200%. It reduces glare, especially outdoors. It adds another point of contact with your eye, thus helping you stabilize your camera, and it makes your camera look more professional in front of clients. 
However, one thing it doesn't do is adjust to your eye. And since it lacks a diopter, it can be next to impossible to use for some people who wear glasses. If you think this might be an issue for you, I'd recommend the Z Finder Pro, although it costs three times as much. But to me, for just over $100, the LCD VF is more than durable. In fact, we used it to shoot in the desert when it was 110 degrees for our short film, and the magnet stayed on just fine. Therefore, I recommend the LCD VF to anyone just getting started with their first DSLR. I think it's the perfect first accessory. And that's it for this week. If you have any questions, send them to me via at mentions on twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock, follow the show's Twitter at filmin 5 d like our new Facebook page at this link here, and we'll be back next week to talk about lenses. Lenses? Lenses. Like glasses lenses? No, like camera lenses. Like your 5D new, and which lens should I buy? Or you have a T2i, which lens should I buy? Did you just call me a noob? Hypothetically, you're a noob and you're asking these questions. What does this 16 to 35 millimeter mean? And why is it so much more expensive than this one? Like you did before? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. Whatever. Peace.